So this is just a great opportunity to stop and reflect and to remember and remind ourselves that all of us, adults, children, parents, teachers, students, all of us in all of our roles, that we all react to stressful life events in very similar ways. Um, we're gonna review briefly 16 different common reactions to stressful life events. And as you look at the list, you'll probably recognize that you've been experiencing a lot of these in the last few months. And as we talk about them, I'm gonna ask you to just keep a tally or keep a count of the number of the reactions that you personally have experienced in the last month. So I'll read all 16 and you kind of, for everyone that resonates for you, just keep, keep a count. So uh, at the end, we're gonna take a poll and you're gonna tell us the total number of stressful, of reactions that you've experienced in the last month. And remember that these reactions are normal and understandable given everything that's happening. And then we'll talk a little bit also about more, more, even more ideas to cope. Okay, so let's look at the list. So, I, so that the list of 16 wouldn't feel so overwhelming, I kind of grouped them in, in three categories. So mind and thoughts, body and behaviors, and feelings. So let's start at the beginning. So you may find yourself thinking about it all the time. It's always on the news. Maybe you're watching the news every day, all day. Um, so you're thinking about it all the time. And so you don't even have a break. You don't even give your mind or your body a break to just rest and relax. It's always like buzzing with anxiety or nerves. Um, or maybe you avoid thinking or talking about it. No, I can't talk about it to anybody. I don't want to talk about it. it. It feels painful to talk about it. So I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm going to ignore it completely. Um, which in a way is kind of betraying ourselves because we have thoughts and we have feelings about it and it's okay to acknowledge and embrace and understand um, our feelings and what, it, what we're going through. Maybe we can't remember parts of what happened. Maybe we're having difficulty concentrating. This is difficult, if, especially if you're still working or if you're studying or if you're reading, like it may just be even hard to get through a page or a form or things like that. So you might see the reactions come out in these different ways. You might also notice your reactions in terms of your body or your behaviors. For instance, many people have talked about having nightmares or having uh, trouble sleeping. And when we talk about trouble sleeping, we mean either insomnia, I can't fall asleep, or I fall asleep but I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep. Um, so all different kinds of patterns of sleeping, but it, that it's different and it, it doesn't feel good because we're, we're it makes us even more tired and makes it even harder to concentrate. So we're at number six now. So remember, you're keeping a tally of how many resonate for you. We might obviously avoid people, places, or things um, because of social and physical distancing, but maybe we don't even reach out. Maybe we don't even want to call um, family members or friends. Uh, maybe we're avoiding and isolating. So it's, it's one thing to socially distance or physically distance. It's another to isolate and withdraw. Um, maybe we're feeling easily startled when there's a noise, like hypervigilant, like always watching out for something bad to happen. Uh, maybe we're starting to feel more physical health problems. Like I always say that stress makes whatever condition you have worse. I don't care if I have dandruff, diabetes, or schizophrenia more stress is going to just make the condition that much worse. So maybe it's coming out in physical health uh, complaints and problems. And then there's just a whole range of feelings. And we talked about last week how we get to have all kinds of feelings and sometimes all at the same time. We could be angry and grateful at the same time. And we can feel scared just because um, we can feel out of control. And this is really hard because we're having all of these reactions and it feels like I don't feel like myself. What's going on with me? And it's, it's a normal reaction. It's a normal reaction to a really difficult situation. It just seems to be how we're built. It just seems to be, as humans, how we're built. Uh, we might be feeling like something bad is about to happen or being on guard to protect ourselves. We might be feeling guilty, especially if we're not doing well in school because we can't concentrate 
or if because we can't work and it's harder for us to provide for our families. So even though these things are out of our control, we might be finding ourselves feeling guilty, which makes us feel bad or angry or ashamed, or we might be feeling sadness, grief and loss. There's so many changes and every change, whether good or bad, feels like a loss and, and we get to grieve it, we get to mourn it, or we just might be feeling bad about ourselves. So we just briefly and very quickly went through all 16. So I'm like, so, so if we um, focus on taking care of ourselves, I love to, to give the analogy of, you know, we all have a baby inside. And I know when I brought home my daughter and she was a newborn, I was stressed. I was like, I need to keep her alive. I need to feed her and change her and make sure she sleeps and she's breathing. I need to keep her alive. I was so stressed out about keeping her alive. And I feel like all of us, I don't care how old we are, we all have a baby inside mm -hmm. and we have to keep our baby alive. So we have to make sure that the baby inside all of us gets to eat regularly and well, gets to sleep regularly and well, um, gets to rest. Um, needs play time, needs cuddle time. So we all have a baby inside that we really need to pay attention to, take care of, and keep alive during these stressful times. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we can ignore the baby inside. The baby inside is really important in all of us, um, especially if we actually have children. Because um, a recent study came out that showed that everybody, everybody is more stressed out these days, but particularly uh, people with children at home. Mm -hmm. So if you're a parent with children at home, then it's all the more important to take care of the baby inside. And I love that parents are trying to soothe and encourage each other. I love it. I love it. Um, and I just want to say that it's okay to notice what we're feeling, even if it's unpleasant. Um, it's okay. It's okay to sit with it. Um, and it will pass. Um, I think it's beautiful to think positively, um, but I would say let's be careful not to jump to positive thinking without feeling all our feelings first. Uh, because I feel like sometimes then, in my experience, and trust me, I'm, I've always lead with my head, not necessarily my heart, but the lesson I've learned is that there are no shortcuts to feelings is that all feelings want to be felt and mm -hmm. embraced and understood. Heard. Mm -hmm. And so even if it feels uncomfortable, just know that it won't last forever. And it's okay to sit with the feeling um, until it passes. No, knowing, trusting that it will pass, but honoring and acknowledging and embracing the difficult or painful or uncomfortable feelings, it's okay. And if we can do that for ourselves, then we're more likely to be able to do that for our kids. And they really need us to, like, mom, can't I just feel what I feel? Can't you just accept that I feel sad? I think culture is dynamic and changing. And um, our ancestors passed on what worked for them as just as we're gonna pass on what works for yeah, us. For us. And also we need to be careful that it's not actually colonization that we're um, perpetuating or replicating, that it's actually um, what our ancestors um, did. Yeah, so there, there's always an opportunity to reflect on what we're doing and seeing if it's really serving us, um, working for our families, and what we might want to tweak or change or go back to, indigenize the way that we deal with stuff. During this time, but at any time, in my experience, we all have to figure out our own treatment plan. For example, I loved acupressure and I found this amazing acupressure practitioner. I took a friend and my friend was like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. It's just all right. So then we go to an acupuncturist and I was like, eh, it's okay, but it doesn't do much for me. Mm -hmm. And my friend was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, I personally love massage or yoga, and I literally have colleagues who say, oh yeah, no, yoga, yoga doesn't work for me, way too slow. I don't have the patience for it. So as we have ideas, I just want to acknowledge that not everything works for everybody, right. and you get to decide what works for you. So let's talk about feeling angry, shame, or sadness. And so what I love to say all the time. This is what I tell myself. I tell myself, if I'm going to feel ashamed for, about doing it, that I won't do it. But if I do do it, 
I'm not going to feel ashamed. Meaning I'm going to accept that I'm doing the best that I can with what I have, with what I know. And as I know more, as I have more support, I can do better. So honestly, I don't know any set of people like parents who are working so hard. And I feel like if other people are not giving you a break, at least give yourself a break. I love this story. Um, I heard this story from Father Greg Boyle. And he talked about how there was a single mom who had a son with, who would like to go out on Friday nights and hang out at the street corner. And she couldn't stop him because he was twice her size. She couldn't stop him at the door. So she'd follow him to the street corner and supervise him on the street corner. And he'd be like, mom, get out of here. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, like you're embarrassing me. Nobody wants you here, go home. And she would just diligently like post herself on that corner. And until, and then the other guys would make fun of him, like, ah, there's your mom. <laughs> you know, you brought your mom. And so finally he couldn't take it anymore. So he went home. And all I could think of was that's, I don't know a better example of what love looks like. Mm -hmm. That mother loved her son so much that she was willing to put up with ridicule. She was willing to walk outside on a Friday nights down on the corner to supervise him. I mean, I, I just think that the things that we do as parents are the exact symbol or meaning of love. And so if you're a parent during this time and your kids are alive and fed and have a roof over their heads or have a place to sleep that's safe, oh my gosh, give yourself, mm -hmm. cut yourself a yes. break because you're doing the most amazing job. And of course, we could all be doing better, but honestly, we just need to be doing good enough, especially during this time. So if you're feeling angry, you get to feel angry. And if you're feeling ashamed, then I would say, cut yourself a break if you're doing the best that you can. And if you wanna do more, then reach out for support, reach out for resources. Do not try to do this alone. None of us, not, uh, not the best of times can we do this alone. We know that for sure. Right. And then sadness, you get to be sad. Feel your feelings, grieve, mourn it. You have a right to your thoughts and feelings. All feelings are normal and natural. And then I just wanna to jump to trouble sleeping. So let me put that out there. What kinds of remedies work for you? I know for me, warm baths and Epsom salt, chamomile tea, de de manzanilla, music, um, darkened rooms, that all works for me. Um, and I actually do that with my daughter too, meditation, but what works for you? So go ahead and um, type in the chat, what works for you? And if you're a parent, please read what's in the chat to see if anything in there might, you might add to your list. And maybe you have your go-to like one or two things, but maybe around these times you need 10. So go ahead and make sure that you pick out, if you have two already, pick out eight more from the chat. I love it. Playing tag, crafting. Yeah, all of Walking those things are relaxing, park. meditative. Yeah. That makes sense to us because we can all have like this physical response like, yeah, that feels really good. And then neuroscience tells us that when we do that, we release these beautiful love hormones that just make us feel so good. And we're like, no wonder we love hugging our family mm -hmm. members because it releases these love hormones that are relaxing and connecting. I love it. Somebody says dancing and being silly. Again, our body produces these beautiful hormones. So when we laugh, um, we produce um, hormones that are like morphine, where it's like painkiller makes us feel good. Yeah. So when you watch <laughs> funny TV shows or when you have a family member who's funny and you just love being around them or love watching certain shows, it's because it floods your body with endorphins. So these delicious um, uh, hormones that your body produces to make you feel good. So there's a reason why a lot of these things we love doing, laughing, hugging. Um, there's a neuro, um, there's neuroscience um, uh, rationale behind why they feel so good. Okay, it is 6.02, so we just have um, a few minutes left and I want us to get to the meditation. So thank you for sharing all your lovely ideas. Please make sure that you have at least 10 on your list. And we're gonna 
end, um, the last activity we have for you is a meditation. So next slide, please. Okay. So I love to say when I do this, why sit when you can lay down? So you're welcome to sit at home, or if you'd like, you may lay down. If you're sitting, put your bum all the way to the back of the chair so that you're sitting nice and straight up with your head and neck aligned, feet flat on the ground. I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. You don't have to. It just helps to minimize distractions. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. I'm going to ask you to imagine a really comfortable place, a place where your body feels so relaxed. It could be your bed or the couch. Or maybe these days it's remembering being on the warm sand or walking through the hills or mountains with the fresh breeze on your face. So decide what spot makes you feel really, really comfortable and experience that place. Notice what you see, what you hear, what you touch, what you taste. Notice how your body feels in this place. Notice how relaxed everything feels. Now we're gonna do an exercise with um, muscles in your body. So I'm gonna ask you to make a fist with your hands and squeeze your hands really tight as you breathe in and out. Now relax your hands and shake them out. And notice the difference between tense and relaxed. Let's do that again. Squeeze your hands like you're making a fist and hold it and breathe. And relax, shake out your hands. Let's do the same with your arms. Squeeze your arms like you're making a muscle and hold it and breathe. And relax. Now bring your shoulders up to your ears and squeeze and hold and breathe. And relax. Ugh. We hold a lot of tension in our neck and shoulders. I'm gonna ask you to scrunch up your face. Do like you're making a funny face. Scrunch up your face and breathe. And relax. So if you're sitting in a chair, I'm gonna ask you to lean back in your chair carefully and stretch. Tighten your belly muscles and breathe. And sit back up. Mm. Now we're going to bend over the other direction and be careful that you don't, um, that you're clear of anything, that you don't hit yourself. So just gently bend over in your chair and just kind of gently hang your head. Tighten your belly, breathe. Feel the stretch in your lower back. Let your head fall gently. Breathe. And sit back up. Okay, make sure you have room in front of you. Now you're gonna put your feet out in front of you. Point your toes towards the wall. Tighten up your leg muscles, tight, tighten up your bum. Hold it, breathe, and relax. 
We're gonna do that one more time. Put your legs out in front of you. This time, point your toes towards your face. Tighten up your leg muscles, tighten up your bum. Hold it, breathe, and relax. I'm gonna ask you to do a body scan. Notice every part of your body from your toes, your feet, your legs, your torso, your arms, your neck, your back, your face, your head. And if there's any part of your body that feels tense or tight right now, imagine that that part that feels tense or tight is like a marshmallow in the warm sun. And just imagine it slowly melting. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. I'm going to ask you to wiggle your toes, shake out your hands, and when you're ready, bring your attention back to the room and open your eyes. And just remember that the comfortable place that you imagined, um, that's your spot, and you can come back to that place anytime you'd like. I love the honest people who are saying, I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> yeah, it takes, it takes a while. Honestly, the, the beauty about relaxation exercises is that they're not one and done. Um, they're really meant for regular practice. So if you can find some time to set aside on a daily basis, maybe right before bed if you're having trouble sleeping. So there's lots of meditations you can access or you can count your breaths. Um, but if you do them right before sleep time, over time you'll notice a difference. Um, and then the, so we have one parent saying that they have tears of joy right now. Yeah, they feel very so relaxed. Beautiful. They feel yeah, very light. You yawning. get to feel that way. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You deserve it, mama, daddy, grandma, whoever it was. Thank you. Pain free. Pain free. Yeah, yeah. The, the antidote to stress, the stress response is rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. So please do not feel guilty. Please feel empowered to rest and relax. And if you're finding that you're taking more naps, it's because your body needs to heal and recover. And I do not ever feel guilty for any nap I take. I love them. Um, and I wanted to say there are, um, I experience a group of people who say that it doesn't help, at, at least the first couple of times. And when I say, well, what's going on? They tell me, oh, it's because I'm thinking, am I doing this right? Is this working? I don't think it's working. And so sometimes we get in our heads and um, my experience is that if we just practice, after a while, your body will just get into it. So if at first it doesn't feel um, as natural or as uncomfortable, that's okay. I would say just keep trying until you start to feel the body relaxed. 